everyone, this is Dave from Archaeus Creative, and today we're going to wrap up our series on proxies and talk through a few points on working with them. After you've imported all your footage and generated all your proxies, click this little plus mark icon for the button editor in the bottom right corner of the program window. Make sure that the toggle proxies button is added to the window and press OK. Enabling this button will allow you to view either the downgraded proxy in the program window or your full resolution footage. You'll see a pretty significant performance dip during playback if you switch off your proxies and you haven't rendered out your sequence. But it's nice to be able to check that any scaling adjustments aren't pushing the raw footage beyond an ideal picture quality. If at any time you want to delete the proxy files for specific clips, you can right click on the clip and reveal it in the finder. The finder will navigate to the proxy file, however this will only be the case if there is in fact a proxy file attached. Move whichever proxy files you don't want to the trash and just mark the media as offline the next time you open Premiere. I usually find this most helpful if I ever create proxies for clips that I've modified the interpret footage settings of. For instance, slow-mo clips. Keep in mind that if you need to make a duplicate of the project's media for any reason, it's best to copy over the proxy files as well. They can add a pretty significant amount to the project's overall size, but if they're not copied over, they'll all go offline when you open the project using the duplicated media. If you're unable to grab them after that point, you'll either have to generate them all over again, or be stuck trying to work with only the full resolution media. If you use Project Manager to archive your videos once you've completed them, note that your proxy files will not be saved alongside the full resolution media. So if you ever wanted to open up the project and work on it again, you'd need to regenerate them or grab all the ones for the clips you used when you archive the project. But that could be pretty meticulous and time consuming. Here are a few takeaways as we wrap up our three part series on proxies. Proxies are most helpful when you're working with high resolution footage, typically 4K and greater. It's best to generate proxies at the beginning of a project and for the source files to all have unique file names. Proxies aren't great for variable frame rates that are modified within Premiere, and make sure to enable the toggle proxy and the proxy column in the program and project panels respectively. That's it for right now on working with proxies. Let us know in the comments if integrating a use of proxies has had a positive impact on your workflow. And as always, please like and subscribe to stay up to date with all our newest post-production tips and tricks. Thanks for watching.